Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a fascinating article written by Dr. David Perlmutter. Um, Dr. Perlmutter is um, a wonderful man. He recently uh, wrote a new book about the association between gluten and affecting the nervous system. He's a neurologist and uh, I very much respect him. He's part of the Institute for Functional Medicine, as am I. And, um, but this article was, was incredible because what it looked at is how uh, wheat is potentially toxic to all humans, uh, not just those with either celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, which really opens an understanding to why um, someone can be tested for celiac disease or tested for gluten sensitivity, have the test be negative, uh, but this person knows in their heart of hearts and very much in their body that they do poorly with gluten and nobody can convince them otherwise. And so these are people who have been uh, kind of accused of having a placebo effect or just joining sort of the popular fad of gluten-free and, and I think we can all agree that uh, we wouldn't be eating gluten-free unless we had to. So. Um, what this explains is the fact that even though gluten is the major protein uh, within uh, the grain wheat, in particular we're focusing on wheat right now, that there's actually 23,000 different proteins in, in wheat and one of them is called, uh, the abbreviation is WGA, it stands for uh, wheat germ agglutinin. So we can just call it WGA for ease, but uh, this particular protein is uh, a lectin, which means it's a type of protein that um, has an ability to defend itself against predators, which uh, is interesting if it's the plant growing as far as the weed is concerned. But in our body, uh, this particular protein has an affinity for proteins found in certain parts of our body. So um, the ends of our joints and tendons and cartilage, the lining of our digestive tract, our blood vessel linings. So what happens is because it has affinity for these proteins, it can actually create um, damage to the lining uh, based on where these proteins are located and, and make these tissues more susceptible to, to damage. So of course, when when it comes to any part of the body, it's not good to, to be damaged, but particularly when we're looking at the gut, um, this could le lead to leaky gut, um, making the lining of the gut more susceptible to the contents of the gut, which some of which is obviously toxic. So um, not a good thing. And speaking of toxicity, they felt that there is uh, the wheat germ agglutinin, once again that WGA, can have direct toxic effects on uh, the brain, on the immune system system, on the heart, and on the endocrine system, which has to do with uh, hormonal balance. So um, big impacts from this one protein. Now what um, I love about this, because we have a great tool, uh, so you don't have to say, well, how do I know if I'm <laughs> reacting to WGA? Um, the test, the laboratory test that we use, that uh, the reason I use it is it's because it's the most comprehensive and it looks at 10 to 12 different uh, protein reactions associated with gluten, measures the reaction to WGA. So we've been doing this for, for quite a while and of course as soon as the human body is reacting to any aspect of a uh, glutinous grain, we just tell the person that they, they shouldn't be eating gluten. Um, regardless of whether they have celiac disease or not. And, and, and this is very much supporting that because what another researcher said, um, Sayer G, uh, I hope that's the right pronunciation, his last name is spelled uh, J-I, and so I'm not, I'm not sure of that pronunciation, but, but that's uh, the correct spelling. And uh, what he noted was that this reaction to WGA is not genetic. So it, it doesn't mean that you have celiac disease or even gluten sensitivity for that matter, that just the fact that you're human, because as we've said so many times, uh, if you're human, you're unable to completely digest this protein. It's a very difficult protein to digest and humans can't do it fully. And now we're seeing that the presence of this uh, WGA in the protein uh, in, in wheat is actually toxic and has negative reactions in the human body regardless of whether you're genetically predisposed to celiac or gluten sensitivity. So it opens that whole other area which um, 
this particular research um, researcher, Dr. Dr. G, said that um, it maybe explains, and we mentioned this in our book, The Gluten Effect, why populations that are wheat dependent um, have um, are, are endemically m more commonly associated with degenerative diseases and inflammatory diseases because of this this particular protein in wheat and the negative effects that it has. So, um, and by the way, not, not a, a GMO fan here at all. Uh, there's a lot of negatives to be said about that and, and that's fodder for another video, but um, genetically modified wheat is actually being uh, produced with, with uh, an enhancement of the WGA in it. So taking this wheat germ agglutinin and making it more present in genetically modified wheat. So uh, more, more problems there than you can possibly imagine. Um, but another reason to stay away from genetically modified foods uh, at all, in my opinion, um, but really some good food for thought as far as how wheat is, is affecting us as humans and, and the fact that we can't digest it, maybe we just should stop right there and, and realize that it wasn't meant to be. Um, but this information on the WGA I think is, uh, is, is, is quite fascinating and really explains a lot as far as what we see with, with uh, people's reactions to, to wheat. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I know I did, and if you have any questions or if you have um, any concerns about whether you're reacting to, to wheat or gluten and what you can do about it, always feel free to contact me. So until next time, I wish you very good health.